Welcome back to my Kansas City Scouts franchise mode on NHL 18. Today we have the playoffs and we won the President's Trophy again for I think the fifth time in a row after making one deadline day move and then we went 18-0-1 and in a 19 game stretch and then we had one loss at the end of the season. We were ridiculous, and Alvin Zhao, the deadline day acquisition, was absolutely ridiculous. He was incredible. If if we win the playoffs and Zhao is, like, amazing, then I might just, I might just get, like, a Zhao jersey and just go out and just spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars getting a Zhao jersey because... I would just be so happy with him and my life would be complete maybe. I don't know. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I feel like that was the best deadline day move possible. Now, he hasn't never played in the playoffs before so we have no idea what he's going to perform like. But let's hope he's a beast. Okay, let's go to the lines for the Minnesota Wild and see what we're dealing with. They used to have Dowd. They may have picked him back up again. We, we got him in the trade and then he went... Uh, Zimmerman is on their first line. Okay, uh, looks pretty good. I'll check the point production in a second. It does look very, very good, actually. Melvin Zimmerman. Bob Hutchings is a problem. Um, why do I know him? He he wasn't... They've beaten us, haven't they? They've beaten us pretty recently because Hutchings was injured and they still beat us. Max Domi, though, on the first line, slightly weaker. Sebastian Aho, Curtis Vallejalai, I think I nailed that, but probably not. Uh, looks very, very good as well. Very, very good centre depth then, clearly. And Jason Coyle make up their top six. And then Yuri Kuhlman looks like a very good third line guy. With Morgan Falk also looking pretty good and festering, letting them down a little bit. Then Leclerc, there are some slightly weird combinations here because Leclerc looks pretty good. And yet yeah, they've got Festerling on there. Athanasiu, how's he doing? He's still pretty quick, even at 36. Joshua Hosang at 35. Okay, so let's take a look at their, their production real quick. 60 points for Zimmerman. 57 for Hutchings. And Domi put up 31. So a weird combination there. 50 for Aho. So why not put Aho up there? 56 for uh, that for Curtis. That's what I'm going to go with. And 47. So they're actually a pretty good top six. Festerling, I don't understand. 25 points. Morgan Folk, 35. And Kuhlman, 32. So a drop off there, but that's expected. I can't be able to check everyone. Defensively, they are significantly weaker than us, so that's where they really tend to lack. Obviously, there's, I mean, he's got excellent offensive awareness, so I could see him having put up 50 points. 46, not bad. It's 96 of an offensive awareness, very, very good there. Chris Begras, who is now a Ranger, I believe. Right? Yeah. They trade, yeah. The Rangers traded for Begras from the Colorado Avalanche for Graves, Ryan Graves, that kind of thing, yeah, Lee Wharton, and then Daniel Watkins, and then Jacob Slavin, who is 36, and Matthew Anders, Andersons, who is from us, so we've actually given them a top six guy, uh, very unusual to see a team that doesn't have actual top six guys in their top six, because it's so easy to come by and so cheap that that's just very, very weird, actually, to have someone that low overall. I'm guessing Slavin's is. He is. How about goalie-wise? They have got two pretty good goalies, actually. Kopstals, who I believe might we might have traded to them as well, possibly in that, that deal for Dowd that I mentioned earlier. And Philippe Danis Pepin, who is very, very good. And they have put up 
not bad. And 0.938, but only off 23 games. So he's been excellent. So they look fine. But we've just won the President's Trophy off an absolute surge at the end of the season. So let's hope we can we can see them off. I'm not actually not that confident. I'm sort of putting out this persona, I think, right now of confidence. But I'm a little bit worried that they might just deal with us again. Let's go. Game one. First period is 1-1. One, one, and of course, Alvin Zhao, on his playoff debut, scores within 10 minutes. Zimmerman draws it back, though. Second period. Benjamin Teal got a goal. We're playing well, and we're winning the game. Let's hope we can see this one out. Third period's ticking away ever so slowly. Josephson scores. I think that's the third, the first line, all with a goal. And I mean, I'm just... I'm loving this, this Alvin Zhao young fellow. He looks like an absolute tank. From 79 overall, apparently that's what you need. Honestly, why have I been going after with Line A or one of those guys? I didn't check how many points he got. He didn't get more than two. I'll be interested to see if he got an assist on one of those goals. Um, just cause. Just cause. He did. He got an assist. So did Teal on the, one of the other goals. And Josephson did as well. Just. I'm so impressed by him. So impressed, dude. Let's go forward. Yeah, we've been spending all this time going after first line guys. What we've done now is pick up a 79 overall who's had a good year. And he's crushing. He's absolutely crushing so far. A comfortable 3 1 win in the first game. Second game, first period, 2 0 down. Okay, Athanasiu and Hutchings. Not a great start. But we drop it back there. Josephson with the goal, and it's not done. 2 1. And we go into the third, needing to get a goal. They go on the power play, though, and they don't score. We need to kick on a little bit here, because they've actually taken control of the game a bit here. Power play for us, though, it's not a strong area for us. That's the problem. I don't know why. And it looks like they're just going to just gonna see the game out. A lot less exciting game. Uh, a bit concerning. But not enough for me to change it around. I think that first line's done well. Climby is available to come back in. Is it worth bringing him back in? Talixson has zero points. Is a minus zero. Has no shots. <laughs> he basically has done absolutely nothing. He's completely... He's given the puck away once. He's completely middle of the road in the playoff so far. And Climby... Let's bring him back in. Oh, I didn't do it. I'll do it now. Is it worth bringing him back in now, or do I wait a game? Because it's not, he's not good enough that I'm going to worry too much about him. I don't... I don't. Yeah, I'll leave him out for one more game. It's not worth him getting injured, basically. It's, that's my, my thought process there. Game three, then, away, and we are tied at ones. But it would be nice to get at least one of these away games, preferably both, to be honest. But... Curtis gets a goal pretty early, and they go on the power play again, and they've scored again. This is a nightmare. 2 nothing. We've actually outshot them, but they've scored twice. Second period, they've scored twice again. Not this again, not this again. they scored again. Right, well, our strong defence has capitulated, entirely capitulated, and Walter Clifford's been injured. That might be something to do with it. And we have no real choice other than putting our boy Arsen on the third pairing, who is more of an offensive guy. But Cogliano is more of a defensive guy, so it should level itself out, I guess. Forward-wise, is uh, Climby still injured? Let's go forward to the game and see if he's back. might not be actually because he was out for a little bit of time before he came in he is still down if, if Talixson had a badish game he had one shot he's a zero they're just getting him out there so rarely it seems Potvan's not playing great what 
What do I do here? Hang on. That second line's playing absolutely terrible. And that first line's doing fine. Why is the second line so bad? I can't figure it out. Minus two. It's been alright, hasn't it? Up to that point. We'll give it one more game, and if we lose this one, then we do have to start thinking about about changes, because we can't afford to just let it go. I won't I don't want to just watch the season go disintegrate in front of our eyes again. First period. Benjamin Teal on Danis Pepan. I don't know how you say that name, so I'm going to be ridiculous with my pronunciation. 15 shots to 5, great first period. Second period, we only have 5 shots though, and they have 10, so pretty much levels it out. Third period, only a one nothing game. We could do with just a nice Alvin Zhao goal. Pop up, see the game out. That would be ideal, but I suspect the longer this goes, the more likely they become to score. Five minutes, yep. Fesseling. Fesseling apparently is an absolute tank. I don't know what's going on with him. And we go to OT for the first time in the series. We go straight in. Come on, boys. We need this one. We really need it. If we win this, I'm a little bit more confident about this series. But if we lose it, power play for us. Uh, the power play is not getting it done. Power play again. It's not getting it done. And they're on the power play. And that scares me. They don't score, though. Come on, boys. This has been a, a triumphant goalie performance from both sides. Especially their goalie. He's been outrageous. Let's go. Second overtime period. Come on, boys. You've got to break him down at some point. We do. McBride pops up. That second line finally gets that, gets that point. And the goalies have been absolutely outrageous. Philippe, Danis, Papan and Brunette. Really ridiculous, actually. Um, and that's sort of made me think I don't need to change much there. But Benjamin Teal has got a goal every other game. He'd be on for 40 goals in a season if that happened. Just, it's never going to happen because he just doesn't score goals usually. Okay, Clifford's back in, and I think it's important that we bring him in. Even if he is a bit injured. Let's get... How's Arsene been? Zero line. A zero player, basically. Uh, Forstrom's not getting it done. Their, their off offensive defenseman is really killing us at the moment, though. Let's get Clifford in. He, I mean, he could get injured, but it wasn't a long injury in the first place, so I'm not too worried. Climie's not back in. Oh, I've stopped the sim. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, let me just check Climie again and check how uh, Talixon's doing still. Minus one. Oh, he's still injured. All right, I'm going to bring. I'm going to put him back in. I think, but I know it's a the risky. You could get injured again, but I mean, I've left him out for like two, three games, and he's been he's not getting better. So I just want to get him in at this point. And Talixson's not a disastrous replacement, so it's not like we're risking Zhao, the king, or Teal. So here you go, two two, an important overtime win there. We'd have been in a bit of trouble there. I'd have been in panic mode if we'd have lost that one. First period, one nothing. Harper on Dennis Pepan. We break him down much earlier this time. Second period, we break him down again. Forstrom. We've had a lot of shots here, and we go on the power play for a long power play, and we aren't able to capitalise. Not only that, that damn Fesseling character is murdering us, and I, I feel like he's an offensive defenseman, but I'm not sure. Honestly. Power play for us. Yes, we needed that. So badly we needed that. I'm still on the power play. Must have been another major. They must have only like several players who are gone. Who've been ejected, I guess. Or something. I don't know. I mean, they pushed us much further than they needed to there. Who is this Fessening character? Is he the, the terrible winger? Who are you and how are you killing us so badly? Hang on. Festering. I'm going to check him out in a second. I feel like he's a forward, is he then? I don't know what line he's on. I'll check him out when the series is done, really, because there's nothing I can do about it. He did get injured, of course. You fractured your jaw. Come on, dude. 
sort your life out. Just be a bit careful with your jaw. Like, go hard, but like not with your jaw. Like, use your, your arms or your body or something, not your face. Let's go Russia, I guess, for a bit. I don't really know who else has got players. I should probably check. In fact, I will check really quick. Because we've got three first-round picks, so it's worth making sure we get the right guys. Let's go draft class. And it takes me earnest, generous dude. Such a great name. Uh, let's go by... The top five has changed considerably. And all of the guys who said they were exact elite have dropped out of that top five. And now we've got Hugo Hen Henrique. is an awesome name again, dude. Come on. Ernest Generous and Hugo Henrique would be incredible. Um, so a lot of the guys who said were top five are now top ten, Langfield included. I'd love to pick up Langfield. If he's medium elite, he's a beast. He'd be, a, he'd be the pick of the draft. I think he'll probably jump back in, but some good picks popping up here. I think those two would definitely be, be getting picked. So like fourth, fifth, sixth rounds, something like that. Anybody else amazing? Who's that third round? Jacob Baker looks pretty good as well, but I won't tag him right now. Yeah, not too bad. Not too shabby uh, a draft here looking like. Could be actually very, very good. Could also be completely wrong, and then we could have end up with a bunch of terrible players. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's go by round. We have some players in the SHL we should look at goalies and then defensemen mainly but also maybe a bit of forwards and uh, nobody there nobody there nobody really there or there so it's the shl the ohl the qmjhl we've got basically everyone in the w so i'm fine with it so let's go SHL and then cover the Canadian leagues more thoroughly. Let's do that. This is not the point of this episode, as you might be aware. But I feel like it's it's probably a year where we want to make sure we get it right. Having three first round picks and knowing that we could probably trade up or if we know that there's going to be an elite guy later in the round, trade down. You know, and get get more assets out of them. Let's go. Game number six. We have two chances to see off the Minnesota Wild, who have put up a pretty stiff competition here, actually. More of a fight than I maybe thought they would. First period, 0-0 zero, zero game. Second period, a one nothing game. Talixson, who was the injury replacement, back in for this game after Climey got injured. Third period, we go slow. I was almost about to click X then and skip it. Power play has been completely flaccid for us so far. We do score on that one, though, as I'm saying it. Guys, the power play is really, really bad. We don't get another power play for the end of the game, do we? Kosomar with the goal, though. Finally, that second line maybe a little bit kicking on, which is good. This has been a very, very clean performance. 22 shots to 37. 2 nothing win. Danis Pepan put up a good performance, but not as good. As our boy Brunette in that game. 100% save percentage. Talixson with the goal. We see them off in six. Exactly what we needed. To just kick on maybe a bit. To come from 2-1 down and win 4-2. Uh, bit of a confidence boost. Know that if we get in trouble, we're not, we're not out of it. It's all going to be fine. We can do this, boys. This can happen. It can actually happen. Winnipeg and Colorado are still going. If Colorado can be knocked out, that would be ideal. They are knocked out. We don't have to go up against them. The team that swept us last year. Let's take a look at who we do have to face. That's the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, man. The Colorado Avalanche gone. That's important. That feels important. That's the two-time champs, guys. The two-time champs. Okay, we come up against Houston. Obviously a very talented first-line forward. 99 offensive awareness. Killed it in the first round. 71 points in the season. 8 points in 7 in the playoffs so far. Timothy Burke. Pretty sure we've had him before. He got 55 points on the season and 5 in the playoff first round. 
pretty good. Not really sure how. Good offensive awareness, I guess. Derek Petrangelo looks pretty decent. Eight points in that first round again. 68 on the season. Pretty good. Then it drops off quite significantly. Nikolai Ehlers is still going. Four points in that first round. Four again for Alexi Emelin, who is not Alexi Emelin like I'm thinking of. And then Jesper Nikolas, who looks all right, actually. Probably scored some goals in the regular season, right? Not really, which is surprising, because if you look at his shot, his shot and his offensive awareness, it's not like that much worse than um, Zao's, but I don't know. Kyle Connor is still going. He's on the third line. And then you've got Maurice Thibault, Spencer Jaspers, who should be putting up some goals and not really doing so. Then you've got Tony Mackinnon, and Mikhail Granlund is still going at 39 years old, and Jason Dickinson. Defensively, Jimmy Salcedo, who was one of our very early pickups. His potential has dropped actually already, which is a bit early. He looks pretty good. He got two points in that first round, 25 on the season, but looks like a pretty good player. Forgotten that Salcedo was Danish, which is very funny to me for some reason. They didn't. That's not. Like they didn't load any Danish names into the database. Um, Chuck Strudwick, unbelievable name. Chuck Strudwick. It's quite difficult to say actually. Chuck Strudwick. There's too many K sounds in there. Chuck Strudwick. Uh, looks pretty decent. Not amazing. A decent first offensive line. Pretty well, pretty good even, I'd say. Only a couple worse than ours. Dean Garcia is a former Kansas guy as well. I know that for 100%. Yep. I've uh, been playing in the league for quite a long time now at this point. He was all right, Garcia, for us. But he's, he's okay. Jacob Larson looks pretty decent as well. Former Ducks guy. And then you got Yuri Kaigurodov, who is someone that we actually looked at picking up. And looks pretty decent. He's still got room to grow. Hasn't grown much. Grown one overall since I looked at picking him up. Then you've got Rick Olsen, who looks fine. So not bad defensively. Actually, maybe better than us defensively. Mm, pretty close defensively. I think actually we are better. Because we've got Ulevi and Kearns at 88s. Then uh, 83 and an 84, then an 86 and an 84, something like that. So we're just edging them by like four or five overall points. Goalies, Eric Comrie still doing the damn thing. Down to a fringe starter potential and 35 years old, but still listed as an elite goalie. Played very well in that first round. Must have got pulled because they got only got three wins. Okay in the um, regular season. And hasn't got a great playoff history other than this one year. And I suppose that's a pretty good year as well. A very good year as well. But a couple of three years in a row where they were, it's like, one good, two are not so great. Only got three wins, so he must have been pulled in one of those games, which means he was outstanding in the others, basically. Because I'm guessing he's got one game played and he got 26 saves, yeah. So he's been unbelievable, and he won that game for them, coming off the bench. And they look pretty good, but nothing we can't overcome. Whether or not we will is a whole different matter. Let's go for game number one. Come on, boys. I'm a bit nervous. I just, I just, I can't, I, I can't not win a not win a playoff series, not win a, a Stanley Cup. Sorry. First period is a one-one game. Alvin Zhao has only scored two in the playoffs so far, but he hopefully he'll, he'll get settled down and kick on. Larson, the defenseman, scoring second period. Is 4 1. Alvin Zhao with the second of the game. Josephson and Kosenwa. We are very badly out shooting them. But it doesn't matter because Nikolai Ayers has just scored. Power play for us though, and we do score again. Josephson with the second of the game. A three goal lead with 10 minutes left is surely too much. I don't want to speak too soon. They do score again, and we will see this out till the end. And they go on the power play again. Don't let them score now, boys. Come on. Okay, see this out. 
Two minutes left, two goal lead, and we do see the game out. A good first showing. Defensively, maybe not outstanding, but forward-wise, Josephson with four points, Teal with three, Alvin Zell with three as well. Very, very good showings from them, and I'm very happy with that. Teal is over a point per game. Zhao, Zhao makes the difference to that line. I really do think so. I think that's the difference that uh, Benjamin Teal has got two guys who want to shoot the puck. And it just makes him so much more effective. Game number two. one nothing in the series. Let's go. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period, one one, Potvan and Ehlers. Ehlers with two already in this series. Third period, we're going slow. We're out shooting them. We're on the power play, and we aren't able to score on it. I might take a look at the power play after this game. Potvan again with a goal. Two in one game. On the power play for them, though, and I'm a bit more scared when they go on the power play than I am confident when we go on ours, if that makes sense. Because I think theirs might be a little more potent than ours. We do see the game out, though. And we have our home ice advantage very much intact. And we have a 2 nothing lead after two games. The Rangers are in the playoffs on the other side. Didn't even really clock the rest of the playoff tree. The Vegas Golden Knights are also 2 nothing up. And they're a team that's beaten us before as well. And a team that was up there on the President's Trophy. And I haven't mentioned this so far. Because I thought it joined the regular season. They're doing very, very well. That's a team that now has Patrick Lyonet on there. And if that comes back to bite us in the arse, I'm going to be... I'm going to be a mess, I think. Let's go to game number three. A 2 nothing lead we take in. Let's just see these guys off. Let's, let's just sweep our way through the rest of the playoffs, guys. That would be nice. First period, 2-1. Zhao and Thornton. t bow bounces back for them. Second period... 3-1's out again. He's on it, boys. He's on it. Now he's hit his stride. This is what we needed from him. Potvan scores again. He's hit his stride again, apparently. Was that a shorthanded goal? Don't know. Thornton scored again. But then Nicolas gets one back for them. But a three-goal lead with ten minutes left, which is what we have now, is surely going to be too much. This one, we've actually been outshot. Which is more unusual. Zhao. What a... Man, this guy is. I love this guy. What a pickup. I'm so happy with this pickup. So, so happy. Hat trick in the playoffs for him. What a man. And another important win. Three assists for Benjamin Teal. We are looking golden in this series, boys. 3 0 lead. 2 1 now lead to the Vegas Golden Knights. The Sharks get one back. Benjamin Teal. 10 assists in 10 games, in 9 games, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just keep it going. I want to keep the flow going in this episode. I don't want to keep looking at things that aren't necessarily important. Like, Zhao's getting some points. We don't need to worry too much about how many he's got and what's going on in the background. First period, one nothing. Thorburn with the first goal. Second period... Ulevi and we have a 2 nothing lead, but they score immediately. Nicolas, who scored, I think, three against us in this series. And a one-goal lead with 12, 11, 10 minutes left is not secure, but Thornton scores. And is that... I keep getting confused between Thornton and Thorburn. I think that's the left winger, and Thorburn's the fourth-line centre. And it looks like they get one back on Nicolas again. Oh, they don't manage just to get it back fully, though. They outshot us again, though. And we've just been more clinical in that game. And we have swept a team for the first time in, in, in bloody ages. I don't know that we've ever done it with this team. Yes, but Nicolas gave us some issues, but not enough. And we swept them. We've only gone and bloody swept them, boys. Let's go. We're in the conference final for the first time in, I think... Four years, the year that we won the President's Trophy for the, for the first time, we went to the conference final, right? And we lost in the Stanley Cup final to the Islanders. I think that's the last time we went there. Let's keep dusting, dusting forward. It's not a thing. The Rangers beat the Devils. That's what I like to see. That's good stuff. Hopefully they're garbage when we play them, though. And then the Red Wings have also beaten the Canadians, so we know that that's going to be 
Rangers Canadians, and it looks like it's Vegas Golden Knights. The expansion teams meet in the conference final. I mean, I'm saying expansion teams. At this point, they haven't been expansion teams for 13 years, so it's kind of... At this point, maybe it's an irrelevant conversation. Do you know what I mean? Like, we don't still talk about... I'm trying to think who was, who was brought into the league at the same time. Minnesota and Columbus. Is that right? Predators, maybe? No. Minnesota and Columbus sounds right. We don't still talk about them like uh, expansion teams playing each other, but it's, I mean, it's fresh for me, so we still talk about it. Let's have a look at the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm a little bit scared because I know that line A's on there, and I know he's probably crushed it. First line, oh goodness me, first line is, has Valette and line A. Let's have a look at how they've done. Dmitry Sergeyev looks actually very, very good. Nine points in how many games? How many games? 11 games. Pretty good start for him. Brandon Vallette, 8 points in 11 games. Okay, he looks very, very good though. Really quite well-rounded. Okay, now line A. He's got 8 points with 5 goals in 11 games. He signed a $14 million extension with us in the summer. And we immediately traded him as soon as the uh, free agency period started. How did he go in the regular season? I've been too scared to check. He got 68 points. Okay. So less goals and more assists. But that's probably because he's playing on a line with a sniper in Valette who got 29 goals and 60 points. So Line A was actually probably their star. You're welcome, Vegas. Now, hopefully he falls off a cliff in the summer, but not literally. I don't... I, I mean, even game version, I don't wish that on anyone. Uh, Yerky... Pakashlati. Five points there. He looks pretty decent, but not amazing. George Hoffman, former fourth overall pick for us. Looks pretty good, actually. Eight points for them. He might have been a pretty good performer this year. Not really. 46 points. And then four points for Miroslav Bartovic, who looks all right. And then their third line is Teravainen who's got five. They've got they've got a lot of spread out scoring here. Tyler Sil Sil Sylvester, who's got two, and then Paul Tucker, and they start to drop off here. Zachary Seneshin, Joey Hatcher, and Joel Eriksson Ek, okay, who have been pretty good as a fourth line, to be fair. Defensively, we must be stronger than them, but Calvin Galchenyuk, eighth overall pick for us, these guys have not really worked out, have they? Which is good, I suppose, in that we got rid of them. But we do have to face them. So this is tough. Jared McIsaac, who is a 29, 2019 pick? 2018. Is he available for this year? I had it in my head that he was like super highly rated, but maybe I'm just wrong. Kirk Hutton. Calvin Galchenyuk. Jaden Von Arx, Lucas Richter, and Corey Garcia, also from the Kansas City Scouts, a top 10 pick as well. A lot of our picks just haven't, have not panned out. Um, this is what I'm realizing, because every time we play a team, it's like, oh, their middle of the road guy it was our first pick in this draft or whatever. Defensively, we should absolutely destroy them, but it's not as far as you think. I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Samsonov is obviously a great goalie. Bus, again, is another one which just didn't pan out. He was a third-round pick, so, I mean, for a third-round pick, he's not too bad. He hasn't played at all yet, which makes me think that Samsonov has crushed it. Done pretty good. Eight wins in 11 with a .928 save percentage and a 2.08 goals against average. Pretty good. Fairly even. I'd say we have the edge, though, in all three areas but not by a massive amount. I'm a little bit scared. But we did just sweep the Jets. We should be confident. We'll keep an, uh, a sort of corner of our eye look at the Red Wings and the Rangers. Wait. Okay, I thought that the Canadians have just beaten the Red Wings. I, I must have re misread it. Let's go, though. Game one. Come on, boys. First period. Patrick Line, please don't, don't, don't be that guy. 
We were nice to you for so long, bud, and you were crap. Or you were disappointing at the best. Second period. Still a one nothing game. Even on shots. An even game. Thorburn pops up with a goal. Come on, boys. Let's show them what we're about. President's Trophy. We fired our way up to that top position right at the end of the season. With the best in the goals for. Best in goals against. Haven't been that dominant in the playoffs so far, though. And it looks like we could be going to overtime in game one. Very, very even game. No complaints of that going to OT at all. That it's 1-1 is maybe slightly surprising. We go for OT. Come on, boys. Get this ahead. We don't want to be down at the start with a home ice advantage. So tight. We get a goal. <sighs> Kosamoa. And we are one up. In the conference final. Come on boys. I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to believe. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because it's the hope that kills you. Come on boys. Line A's got one in one against us so far. Feels really weird to see Line A popping up from the Golden Knights. It feels weird to see Line A on the Winnipeg Jets in real life now. Because I've had him so long on the game. But game number two. The second of two at the start of the home stretch. Let's go. First period. So 2-1 game. Thorburn and Kosamoa. And Thorburn and Thornton, maybe I'm over-exaggerating because they've played... They've um, they've both scored all right. But I feel like they're both playing quite well. 2-1 though. Tucker gets one back. Disappointing to let Tucker score. He's a depth forward on his roll. Why am I going slow? I don't know. But Josephson scored. And we're 3-1 up going into the third. We're going to go straight in. We are out shooting them badly. But Patrick Bloody Lion has popped up with a goal. They've only had 15... No, well, it's going up now. They're having a lot more shots now, but they they scored twice on their first 13, which is not... It's not like we're going to pull the goalie levels of garbage, but it's it's not ideal, considering we had so many more. Power play f for us, but we don't manage to score. Come on, boys. Let's see it out. And we do see it out, and we're 2 nothing up. We win both of the first two games at home. And we have our advantage... We have a good opportunity here to go away and nick one. And then we've got some good chances to go and nick it at home. Let's go with three weeks on defenseman. Come on, boys. It was the goalies that actually needed to spend time on, wasn't it? I just remembered that. Game three, a 2 nothing advantage. Only one goal game so far, though, so it's closer than you'd think. First period, Sergeyev scores. Second period, one nothing game, 28 shots for us and only 13 for them. And that's concerning because it says to me that Brunet isn't playing anywhere near as well as Samsonov, even though we're winning the games. Power play opportunity for them. They don't score. We need one, boys, though. 33 shots so far. We do get one. Thornton, again, I, I can't remember if it's him or Thorburn or both that are playing really well or neither. And it's just that I keep spotting the names with Thor at the start. We go to OT, and they've only had 20 shots, but look, Samsonov's kept them in it, and they, they're looking good. They're golden to just nick one here. OT, come on, boys, 44 shots, and Samsonov is killing the game. Power play opportunity for them. They don't score. Power play opportunity for us, and we don't score. Another one for us. A long one, we don't score. We've only had, barely had a shot on that one. We do nick one, though, and of course, the man... Alvin Zhao, what a pickup that guy was. I'm so excited by him, and my goodness, we're three up. We're three up, boys. Nikolai Samsonov did a damn fine job in that game. Brunette did well, but man, Brunette really pushed us there. We needed to. We needed that one as well now, because if they start getting a bit of a run and a bit of confidence, we could be in trouble. But we're three nothing up. Come on, boys, let's sweep them. This would be redemption against this lot who beat us a couple of years ago when we won the President's Trophy in the first round, I think. We've got four opportunities to get one win. And now what's going to happen is Patrick Lyon is going to score four hat-tricks. First period, Sylvester and Sergeyev, and they do they do go two up. And again, only six shots, but we've had 11, and, they, and we haven't managed to break their goalie. Second period... Okay, third period. I, I suspect this game might be gone because we're really struggling to break down Samsonov. Maybe not because Thornton has scored again and I think it is Thornton who's killing this. We've got a chance here, boys. We're not 
being as dominant in this one, they're, they're ahead and they're shutting the game down. We've got about five minutes left to nick this goal and take it to OT. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It isn't. A much more even game, though, than the last couple, where they've been really lucky to stay in it. This time, a fairly deserved win. But we still have another opportunity here where we can win it at home. And we've got, I mean, we've got another three opportunities here, and I'm starting to get a bit nervous. I'm getting clammy hands because I'm a bit scared that they could just do something outrageous here. First period, a one nothing lead, Rycroft. Second period, <sighs> I think we can really we can uh, do what I just did and breathe a sigh of relief there, boys. Potvan, Josephson, and Rycroft have scored now. We don't want Lion A to score five. Basically, that's the only thing that would really hurt my feelings. He scored twice against us, and he did all right in the first two. But I don't know that he's popped up with anything since. I can check, because I know that he had eight points. Five goals and three assists at the start of the series. We're going to the Stanley Cup, boys. It's finally happened again. Finally. Finally. It's been four years since our, our Stanley Cup against the uh, New York Islanders that disastrously went to seven games. But we've just, uh, we've just won 4-1 and 4 nothing against the uh, Knights and the Jets. And we look all right here. <sighs> Shut out as well is just a real confidence booster. Let's take a quick look at the points on our team because we're at that stage where this video is about to end. Zhao has got 14 points and 7 goals. And Thornton has got 5 and 10 points. Not bad at all. Thorburn's got 3, but no assists. So Thorburn has popped up 3 times, which has confused me. But not as many times with the assists. Goalies. Important to see how he's doing, and he's doing very, very well. 0.942 in there. No complaints at all. Let me just really quickly check the old Vegas Golden Knights. And actually, Samsonov did pretty good, but not amazing in the end. And let me check Line A. Line A got three points in those five games. Two goals and one assist. Which is not an awful performance at all. McBride didn't do anything. So I was about to say it's a great trade, whatever. I think it's a good trade because it allowed us the cap space. If we had kept line A, we wouldn't have Zhao right now. And I don't think Benjamin Thiel has 15 points when line A is on his line. So I think that's a good trade. 3-2 to the range. If we have to play the Rangers in the final, I'm going to be so, like, miffed. Has that gone to game seven? It hasn't had the game yet. Looks like it is going to game seven. Man, I don't know if I can... Why are they not playing? Come on, play the game. 3-3, three, three, game 7. Let's go forward in the extra couple of days and see. A bit of rest is nice, though. Playoffs are over, and we are playing the New York Rangers. We've only played New York teams in the final. I'll say that first. The first one didn't go well. The second one is against my beloved. Um, oh, man. Okay, that's... Oh, man, I'm smiling, but I'm also in my head like, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, no, oh, no, oh, crap. That's what I'm thinking, to be honest with you. <sighs> okay, I'm going to give you an outline of their team in the next get in the next video. I'm going to end it there on a cliffhanger, like I, as I like to on, on playoff episodes. We're in the final. Finally, again, we're in the final. And we're looking good. And we've had a little break. We've had a little break there. Look, one, two, three, four, five days without a game. Hope you enjoyed that. Join me for the Sunday Cup final. Thanks for watching.